Hello and, and welcome everyone to our LinkedIn Live. Every now and then, each week actually, on average, we broadcast our lives through different medias, covering different topics that interest us. Um, some of you might have seen the topic of today's meeting and thought virtual trions. What is it? 2012? So it's it's not. It's 2022. But the topic has still a lot to uncover. The virtual try-on topic has still a lot to uncover. And by a lot, I mean you could build a report around that, which we actually did. We took a dozen of virtual try-on solutions and grilled them. We took brands like Gucci, Ray-Ban, Pandora, Charlotte Tiburi. So the bar was set quite high. And we came up with some interesting conclusions, and we would like to share them with you today. And by we, I mean me and the experts joining me today. That is, first of all, Agata Ronczewska, our UX practice expert. Hello, Agata. Hi. Uh, also joining us will be Łukasz Borowski, who is our senior UX researcher. Hello, hello, Łukasz. Hi. And Grzegorz Mrukwa. Grzegorz, are you there? Hey, I'm there. Grze Grzegorz is our staff engineering manager of, of data science. It's, it's great to meet you guys here. Uh, first of all, let me encourage our audience to ask the questions as we go throughout the live. We will try to address them every now and then. Secondly, guys, this is not the first time that we meet um, focusing around virtual try on topic, either internally or externally. So my question to you, my first question to you is, can we consider ourselves as virtual try on experts already? What do you think? Agata, Łukasz, Grzegorz? Oh, I think we are definitely way closer than we were before. And uh, the research that we have done was super interesting, very informative. And like you said, it seemed like technology of yesterday, but somehow it's gaining um, traction right now. So it was very interesting for us to see what users have to say about it. And uh, when it comes to understanding users feelings i'd say we're we're really getting there to to knowing what what they are when i when i said meeting a few a few times already especially it uh, is about grzegorz because we did meet a few times about virtual trial also grzegorz so grzegorz do you consider yourself an expert also already well, I would need to ask in which virtual trials, because uh, in, in, in investigating the virtual trials themselves is actually a very, very broad topic. And each of the kinds of virtual trials actually requires a lot of in-depth knowledge uh, so that you understand what are the small, slight differences in how the, for example, close virtual trial works as compared to shoes virtual trial or jewelry virtual trial. This, this seem very similar. Uh, at least from the user's perspective, but actually the tech behind, behind it is, is completely different very often. So I think uh, we, we already know the distinctions. We already know those details uh, a lot. So I believe there is some expertise in the team, uh, not only me, but also, but also our computer vision team. Uh, whether we can cover all of virtual trials, well, that highly depends on the customer's setup. Uh, but I'm pretty positive about that. We're, we're getting there. We are getting there in order to cover all of the virtual try on topics. And uh, Ukash, what do you think? You, you did a fantastic job when creating the virtual try on report with us. Do you consider yourself an expert on that matter? Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. But um, I think that uh, we've gained a lot of knowledge how to test that kind of solution, what is important, uh, what kind of issues uh, uh, users could deal uh, during <clears throat> in the purchase process that includes using virtual trials. So yes, I think that uh, we are ready, ready to, to 
um, advice uh, the uh, the best practices and uh, and uh, what could be uh, <clears throat> improved in that kind of solutions fantastic guys so let me start with the first big question is why virtual trions why why that topic could you please explain especially from your personal point of views what what is interesting about that that specific matter if we may start with Agatha. Uh, thanks. I think for us, um, UX designers, UX researchers, the most interesting thing is what, what users think about it and uh, that they are curious about it. So we have noticed some curiosity. Um, and it is a complex solution. It seems to be fun and engaging. Uh, does it uh, translate into actually using those solutions and benefits for the companies. Uh, so there are a lot of different aspects that we can touch upon and investigate uh, and explore. So that makes it very interesting for us. Guys, would you like to add your perspective on that? Well, for, from the machine learning or the data perspective, I think that videos are super, super interesting, especially because they are created as a composition of few different computer vision solutions. So depending on the custom expectation of, of the customer, of the of, uh, of potential owner of such a virtual trial solution, and they may vary a lot. For example, we propose completely different components uh, when we target in-shop luxury video in 60 FPS and 4K, uh, because that has pretty, pretty, uh, you know, high expectations in terms of the performance itself. Uh, and completely different components are selected for mobile users when we need to deal with seriously limited computing power and so on. So there are two main elements of this uh, this kind of solution. So first of all, we need to detect where to put the item which we try on and then actually place this item uh, in, in the right place. Uh, in specific cases, it is merged into one step. Uh, so for example, in cases of makeup, of clothes, uh, we can use a very complex neural network, but again, this provides you a different kind of trade-off uh, so it gives you better realism, but it is at the cost of speed. So for us, it is extremely interesting because there is so much different areas to consider while, while building this kind of virtual trion. And basically knowing that those areas are something that we need to answer before we start building a virtual trion solution and that this will be crucial for the end uh, user experience. Uh, well, I believe this is, this is something really awesome and that, that we can do in building such virtual trying solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So um, let's say there are three parties in the game. One party is, are the end customers, which Agatha covered. The second party is us, so the technological provider. Let's talk about the third part. So the one who actually pays for the solution, the retailers. What is it in there for them? I have some experience regarding that, but I will be interested in hearing your your perspective. What do you think? Well, let me start again. Um, uh, like I said before, this is something that users are interested in, and this is exciting and fun and engaging. So uh, com companies can offer greater personalization. Uh, we improved customer experience. They can also think about accessibility and how to use that for accessibility purposes and, and therefore achieve also higher customer engagement. Um, and that's just the tip of um, the iceberg, I think. Thank you. Grzegorz, would you, would you like, and Łukasz, would you like uh, to add something from your perspective? Sure, mm -hmm. why not? Uh, I, I can start with some, some naive elements. And so the engagement, as Agata mentioned already, but I think that there is also the important matter of the perception of being the market technological leader. So you provide some kind of additional wow effect. Uh, but as Agata mentioned, this is the tip of the iceberg. So for example, we can analyze what uh, which specific products, try-ons were shared to friends, we can get much more insights into products which were tried on together. So for example, if someone buys an item in a shop, 
uh, offline or received it as a present, uh, it may be quite important to virtually try it on with another product together, which we would not know uh, that, that the customer has. So it can provide us more integration of the data, more integration of the knowledge of actual customer uh, st status in terms of omnichannel approach. And there is also one aspect I perceive underestimated today, uh, something something that we already recommended to, to some of our customers, and um, like a feature uh, called we we call still in the look of your friend or something like that. Uh, so we all know it doesn't always work as expected in real life. For example, trying on makeup or something else, uh, but it could could be easily tested with a, with a custom virtual trial. So if it is properly designed, it could be potentially equipped with a specific product recognition so that you just upload a photo of your colleague and you can virtually try it on. So, for example, some specific makeup products or something like that and immediately got a product recommendation which which of the products that were recognized. So you can basically buy that look. So, so you do not need to look for products. You do not need to you do not need to figure out what what is actually there so you have like an actionable item and that that basically you just shoot a photo and you can buy the look directly not investigating what was the specific uh, the specific item and that one applied thank you yeah Lucas, please yeah, I think uh, about uh, online shopping uh, together with friends for example using uh, uh, live chat uh, together with virtual trials so that uh, that that could move us uh, closer to the uh, real life uh, experience for example uh, i could uh, try virt virtually some some glasses or or, uh, or clothes and my friends or colleagues could uh, comment it uh, instantly uh, seeing me uh, uh, trying different products so there is so much possibilities uh, to explore in the future. Thanks, 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 thanks for that. Uh, Grzegorz has mentioned the beauty sector a few times. Lukasz has just mentioned um, the, the spectacles market, both of which have probably done the biggest number of projects around virtual trions. Beauty actually sector has lately showed us how it should be done. They, they do it properly. They have some strategy about it. So this is uh, where I would like to direct my words to all, all the retailers that might be out there watching our lives. Do not try to cover all the aspects that Agata, Lukas, and Grzegorz just mentioned at the same time. It's not possible. It's either about engagement, maybe about converting. It depends. It's all about the strategy behind it, where you would like to place it. Because if you just put it as a gadget on your website and still would like to see it converting, it's not going to happen. You, We have to do it in, in a wiser manner. But touching on that, let's let's move further on. So, so, so the research, the research that we did um, when we tried to grill the, the retailers, check what's going on on the market, whether after these, let's say, 10 years of virtual try-on solutions being on the market, did we get to the point where most of the solutions are excellent or did we uncover something interesting there? So, guys, what do you, what are the, the biggest insights that we found while preparing our report? Maybe we'll okay. catch. Maybe we'll catch. <laughs> we'll catch. Sure. So uh, um, maybe I'll I will start from um, from describing the research. Uh, we focused on four categories: eyewear, jewelry, shoes, shoes and cosmetics. Uh, so we carried out UX audit. Uh, we've done usability testing and user interviews. Uh, so uh, UX uh, um, audit. Uh, um we've checked solutions uh, by 10 brands user interviews and usability tests with 18 users and we've tested solutions uh, by four brands we've divided uh, the issues um, 
on three categories, minor, major, and critical. Uh, so the, <clears throat> uh, the findings and the, uh, the most, uh, uh, the, 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 the most interesting uh, for me insights uh, uh, I could divide uh, into a few categories. First of all, the technical problems um, that uh, prevents uh, uh, users from using uh, virtual try-ons. For example, um, when virtual fitting room function were on a on available uh, because the function didn't show up so it was the uh, it was the common problem for example in a ray-bans shop uh, it was uh, it creates a funny situations during the test because uh, I tried to switch browsers uh, with uh, with participants and uh, um, okay so I asked about uh, another installed browser we check the, if, if if solution will appear. Uh, so I ask about uh, Safari, Chrome, and uh, please uh, at least tell me how many browsers do you have. Maybe we we, we could uh, we could try on another. And and in a few cases we uh, we, we couldn't uh, start the function um, uh, on. Every browser that that we've tested, and it was uh, it, it was very disappointing uh, moment uh, uh, for the user. Uh, the other technical problems uh, were uh, regarding to the uh, starting camera issues when uh, when uh, it was a problem to allow camera uh, to to access to the tool. The second group of the uh, problems was uh, uh, general usability issues. So uh, it was sometimes hard to find uh, an option to change a color. Uh, it was uh, like like in this case, it, it, due to the poor eyesight, um, uh, the user had, had to wear their real glasses to see what is on what appears on the screen so uh, so it was it was really hard to to uh, check the look when you have uh, your uh, two pairs of glasses uh, in the same time um, it also um, was the annoying little things uh, like a logo in the wrong place for example when uh, when uh, someone's uh, tried to um, check the lipstick color on the Charlotte Tilbury shop, uh, uh, the, uh, there was a divided there was a divided line that uh, you could check the look before and after, and the Charlotte Tilbury logo appears exactly on, on a user's lips. So it's hard to hard to compare the look. Mm, there's uh, the the third group of problems was the problems with the visualization. Mm, uh, there's a uh, for example from my from my perspective the, the most interesting example we have here with uh, with the Asian nose bridge because the uh, um, because the glasses were always too high on the face and the user. Uh, has to manually adjust uh, the frames on the face, so it was uh, really annoying and uh, and, uh, and the problem. There was uh, another problems when uh, uh, colors didn't look uh, look right. For example, shoes look clunky. Uh, problems with visualization also affect a trust uh, for a tool. Uh, for example, when uh, some object seems to be uh, smaller than in real life or bigger. So, uh, for example, when users uh, try uh, watches, uh, they were, weren't sure if the product uh, that appears on the, uh, on the hand is the, uh, in the right size. Mm. 
Next group of the issues is uh, that uh, um, uh, we have uh, limited try-on options for multiple products. So uh, it, uh, it is not possible to match uh, several products uh, to each other. Uh, and users couldn't try on a set of products. It, it is uh, uh, especially important in a categories like uh, um, clothes, uh, jewelry, or, or makeup. Uh, because, um, for example, when someone wants to uh, match a lipstick for a evening makeup, it's it, it's hard to you know. Um, uh, hard to put on uh, face the evening makeup just to try a uh, lipstick that would match. So it uh, it is really important that, uh, that the solution uh, could uh, um, uh, could allow you to to um, to try multiple products at the same time. So the next uh, group of problems uh, um, it was the situation when the uh, virtual try-on um, were unavailable in, uh, for example, um, some category of products. So it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, um, for example, in Charlotte Tilbury, it was not possible to check every color in the eyeshadow palette. So it it was uh, uh, disappointing for the user because. Uh, um, there were no explanation why has it happened. Uh, uh, next group of the problems uh, is uh, lack of uh, look comparison and sharing options. So uh, um, the main uh, advantage of uh, Virtual Tryon is that uh, this tool allows you to narrow down your choice. And uh, it works well, but uh, when it comes to comparing uh, uh, the products that uh, that you are interested, sometimes it's uh, it's not working because you can't compare products uh, uh, in an easy way. Taking a snapshot and using your gallery in your phone it's not a solution. It, it's a workaround. So it would be nice if the tool could uh, could help user to compare uh, look and compare, co compare product. And the last uh, problem is uh, overall shopping experience. It, uh, it occurs when um, the, the process uh, of, uh, of uh, purchasing product using virtual trial was disturbed. For example, when, um, uh, when purchase uh, Purchase buttons didn't take user were expected. In, uh, where the uh, virtual try-on um, uh, solution uses uh, app, and uh, app didn't uh, uh, didn't uh, um, um, didn't work well with the with the online shop, uh, which were on a. Uh, um, on uh, on the site, so it was two different places that didn't communicate with, with each other. So, uh, in that case, overall shopping experience was uh, disturbed, and it, it was hard to um, to check uh, um, uh, basic details of the product, to check the price, to check the uh, the fabric, uh, to, to check uh, all the necessary details that we have to check before uh, before the purchase. And uh, it was also it was the one of the main problems in that occurs. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That's that's what I call gr grilling. You didn't leave not a not a bit on the on the retailers. It is it is good to hear. The conclusion that comes to my head is the is you know that's why we have you UX researchers here with us today. And that's why we have Gregor, because if it wasn't for Wukash and Agata, we wouldn't see, okay, one of the, the, the most interesting issues that I've also seen in the past being involved in a startup, in a spectacle startup, is how can I try on my glasses 
if I have to have my glasses on in order to see myself. So this is something that you will not uncover without a UX research team on your side. At the same time, from the technological point of view, so something that interests Grzegorz, we say, okay, behind the scenes, we thought, we think to ourselves, 60 FPS, is that enough? Will that work? Should we maybe add something extra to that? And it turns out that in the end, it is all about is whether or not the solution works in all of the browsers. This is like something that you should actually focus on before moving 10 steps forward and thinking to yourself, 60 FPS, is, is, is this the, the goal that we should aim for or should we stop a little bit earlier on? But um, thank you very much, Fukas, for grilling. Is there anything positive that you guys have seen in the solutions, in the report itself? What can we actually um, congratulate our retailers for? W what did they do well? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, there are things um, that users like a lot. And the uh, first major thing is that when it works, it's fun. It's engaging. Um, it's uh, it's something you know interesting to be able to try on things in the privacy of your own, own home. Um, it can be practical, but it's also a little bit like a game, a dress-up game. Uh, you can you can do you know instead of switch like browsing through TikTok, you can go and browse through fancy shoes or glasses or rings. Um, and it's uh, it's simply something to do. And I think in our modern world uh, these kind of engagements people value especially when they work really well because it has this this wow factor um it's shareable it's it's very pleasant and uh it can also be you know a catalyst for downloading uh brand specific apps uh and raising brand awareness and you know you already have that raven app on your phone so you might as well just buy those glasses instead of um, some other ones, um, that's also a plus for a company, of course. Um, another one um, would, would be that it also allows users to experiment with fashion trends. I might not be brave enough to do it uh, in the store because, you know, maybe it's weird that I walk into a certain brand or for me it's uncomfortable. Uh, and I can really safely uh, in my own home experiment, try something out, uh, again, even just for fun, um, or maybe because I'm curious. Um, and people appreciate that because uh, it, it, it helped people find solutions that would suit them. Uh, so that's, that's something very nice. And, and retailers benefit because, because we build desire around these products. We think, yes. wow, this you know, ring actually this is something I haven't tried before, but it would change my my life from now on. And it might be that you know I have I would never have considered that particular ring, but now seeing it on my hands, I'm gonna go like, well, that's actually not not bad. I I think I like it, honey. Maybe you should buy me that ring. <laughs> um, you know, so so that's uh, that's nice. And like like you say, uh, for brand engagement. And um, another another thing is that it saves time. Um, so it's useful because it helps users narrow their options um, quicker, uh, like I said, from their own comfort. Um, they know what to buy when they arrive in the store. The selection process is faster. It's less hassle, less, less stress. Um, and therefore, there can be fewer abandoned shopping trips. Um, so that's something that users really appreciate it. Uh, a lot guys uh, thank you to, to to what you just said and just as a confirmation uh, that we did not made it up that this is actually what happens just look in in our comment sections there are plenty of you telling us yes that's what happened to me i wasn't able to go through the whole process i wasn't able to see the specific um product color that i wished for this is something that happens to us every now and there. And that's what this was re report was all about. So let's try to name all these, uh, all these issues that in order, if we implement a solution in the future, 
we will prevent this actually quite simple, quite simple um, mistakes. So we had um, a question from our audience, from, from Radek, and the question was, what do companies risk by providing poorly implemented virtual try-ons app? Oh, so this is a question of user experience, of course, and it's a little bit uh, about their shopping experience or overall shopper shopping experience and brand experience. Um, if I would walk into a store and I would be trying on clothes that are poorly designed or the fitting room is not very nice or that doesn't offer me privacy or if there is no mirror, um, I simply would walk out of the store being like, well, it's not really a nice brand if they cannot do that well. And that translates a little bit into a, a virtual or digital experience. So if as a brand I do offer such uh, such thing, it can be fun, but there is also risk if it doesn't work well. It can be frustrating. It might um, discourage me from continuing with that brand. It might be just like, no, I don't want that, not that those shoes because uh, I, if they do everything like they do this app, then I don't want to have anything to do with them. So um, we we have to be careful um, because this is a touch point with a brand. Um, this is our possibly a starting journey for us to buy something or abandon. Um, this particular um, item and go to a different brand or different store or not use digital solutions at all. Uh, so I think the biggest risk is there. We can create desire, we can create this fun factor and we can have people engaged and that will translate into um, loyal users or very good, nice brand connotations. Um, but if we fail, we, we risk that it will do exactly opposite. Thank, thanks, Agata. And if I may, another um, question from our audience, actually a question from Maria. And I believe Lukas will be, will be happy to, to, to answer that. Uh, if you would have to point out one most common, common weakness of virtual try-on, what would that be? So, Lukas, you actually have searched through a ton of, of different solution. If you were to point the, the one, the one that is um, maybe the most often or maybe the most critical one, it's it's up to you to decide. What would you name? What would you say? Let me think because it's it's a hard question to, to pick only, only one, but uh, <laughs> I could say make, uh, uh, make virtual trials uh, visible. So if you if you have that solution on a page in your shop, make uh, it always visible. Make even if it's uh, uh, some categories or some items uh, couldn't be uh, available in uh, virtual try-on. Please explain it uh, to the customer. Why is it happening? But we have that solution, uh, uh, and uh, we show on the store on a site that is that is available don't hide it when it's not available available because uh, um, uh, the experience of the user is the, the users are confused why why is it uh, available in one category in one item and why it isn't uh, in uh, other so um, that would be the the, the first uh, the first issue that uh, that that I would point do you do you hear us all the ux and the ui guys this is something that you should focus on so if you have a product a big green bottle in the mid, in the middle virtually try it on check it out if you have the solution take advantage of it if you are trying to hide it maybe having that solution at all is is, is not a is not a way sometimes we can help you with that whenever you need it uh, you, you need it. We we are here to we are here to help. And also, but, if I may add, sorry, David, um, it's also fine to to have it only available for some items. Just be transparent about it. Um, just put it up front, like, hey, this item you can try on virtually. This one you cannot. So either advertise it on that specific product page or just communicate it um, clearly. De definitely, if it's even from the operational point of view 
I cannot create, I have 5,000 SKUs, I cannot create 5,000 virtual models uh, in, in my solution. If, if it's that, let the customer know in a nice way in order for him not to get frustrated. Okay, so the second model, well, where can I virtually try it on? This is the model that I would buy and I cannot do it. I could do it previously, just uh, two minutes ago. Let him know, inform him about it in a nice way. Obviously, this will actually be um, a benefit of your sites, showing your transparency. You can only benefit from that, especially when, when it comes to the clients that are quite uh, engaged in the in the brand trying to maybe touch the the topic from from another perspective what can we do about it how can we take these problems that we have right now the issues that we came up with and turn it into strengths especially the the critical ones does any ideas come to your mind I think some we, we've discussed, um, so like being transparent and communicating and putting it um, like advertising we have it, if we have it um, as a company. So that's, uh, that's a big point. Um, well, testing it with users, that's always a very, very good advice. So just do it um, because it's always very unique uh, for each brand. And while we have a report that covers a specific uh, like some number of brands uh, it also doesn't touch upon all the possible possibilities of virtual trials so test it thank you thank you uh, th thank you for that um we had another question from michael uh, who actually encouraged us that we're having quite a cool discussion thank you for that michael but uh, the question is, what are the biggest technical challenges brands are facing right now? And I believe our one and only Grzegorz will be a great person to answer that as he works on the technical side of this solution as his everyday job. Grzegorz, let us know, what is that? Sure. So I think the uh, few few areas. Um, the, the first of all is actually how to digitize the product, especially that you mentioned. Uh, we may have a situation where we have five thousand products. We need to digitize them. It is not always so straightforward. That highly depends on the kind of a project and product. Uh, it is much easier to to digitize, let's say, a shoe than to digitize the jewelry. Sometimes you require a 3D scanner, which is quite dedicated. Uh, sometimes you could do that yourself with just a cell phone. Uh, so, so there are different setups. And it is quite important to have in mind uh, what, what actually is the volume of items to be digitized and how to do that uh, in, in the embedding of the current processes that, that are on, on, in your company because for example sending 5000 items uh, through half, half of the world just to uh, spend few months on digitizing them i don't think it's a super super solution uh, for for building a virtual try on and not not a long term one definitely and uh, then we have some technical challenges for sure with with the available compute power of the devices so uh, when when wherever you embed your virtual try on and there are some limitations if you want to do it on mobile phone sure we have some uh, neural embedded processors and so on but it is still limited as compared to high end, high end computers even if we are using a web browser we are rather not assuming that someone has a gaming pc uh, but rather we are assuming that it should work with any kind of uh, laptop or, or even uh, some some uh, you know um, smaller smaller thinner versions that, that do not have a dedicated gpu card and so on and so on so there is always this limitation of of the capabilities of of the compute power and it may be quite crucial especially in terms of uh, what what Lukasz mentioned with the glasses on glasses problem on run, uh, on right bands virtual try -on. so removal of this kind of uh, glasses is possible i i would not say it's not possible uh, but it always comes with a cost in terms of performance. So perhaps uh, virtually trying on these glasses and removing the old glasses just using browser could be uh, not an option for low-end computers, uh, but could be an option for high-end computers. Uh, but 
we we rather try to uh, not complete not over complicate the, the virtual trials themselves so there may be issues like that but as as we proceed as the compute power rises i believe we will be able to remove this kind of and uh, this kind of issues in general, uh, this is this is the area where uh, the, the approaches are known, but uh, the compute power is the limitation. And then, and there is the last area uh, where we have, for example, the the elements of uh, stabilization, light adjustment, and so on and so on. So that depends uh, quite a lot on uh, whether we I aim to be. Uh, and general in generic virtual train solution or we just want to address a specific kind of product so for example we can do some adjustments for shoes only which will not work well for jewelry for example and it is not necessarily connected to vtos uh, only or, or the methods uh, that are used there are not necessarily also connected to videos sometimes they're only in in scientific publications so it is not like you can just plug and play uh, you, you need to go down to the scientific publication route. You need to investigate whether this is something that will actually solve your problem or not. And it requires a very good uh, specification of the problem that you are actually solving. So if, if we can tell we are focusing on shoes, we can, we can look for specific literature. A, an example of that may be uh, the, the method that we applied in one of, of our projects. It was quite of a complex method for decomposing and reshaping an image into triangles, which itself, if you take a look at the publication, has nothing in common with virtual triangles. But for, for that specific case, it was a core engine for, for this setup. So uh, moving, moving the product, putting in, in, it into the image was actually realized 100% through those triangles uh, so so taking a look at that you would need to simply review much much wider literature than just uh, ready plug and play applications i can i can only confirm what gregor said is true so actually the whole data science team goes through a ton of scientific publications they post it them to us through slack telling us okay there is a new approach to, to that thing but when you mentioned what i really like the glasses on glasses uh, issue it doesn't have to be specifically the technical solution that addresses that why not just what Lukas touched previously have a few shots of yourself in different glasses without having your glasses on you just take simple shot just pressing the space on your keyboard and then after after the whole process you can put your original glasses back on and see on the on, on the screen what how what, what did you what what did you like and what you do not like about certain certain pair of uh, pair of glasses but if i may touch also one more mm -hmm. time to to what you said in the very beginning um something we have talked about previously so using your phone in order to create models could you elaborate on that just, just just a bit? Because I think that's one of the, mm -hmm. I would say, most current trends when creating 3D models. Mm -hmm. Something that might be very interesting for our audience. Sure. There are some cases when you can use your phone and to, to generate the models. For example, that does not work for jewelry, but can work perfectly for shoes. So you shot a set of photos like 100 or 200 or something like that. But 200 already provides you like a top tier model, uh, which, which is in most cases already overcomplicated. So we simplify that again uh, on, on the post-processing level. So you shoot a set of photos, you can upload those photos. Uh, it may be done by a custom application. You upload those photos to a PC or, or to cloud. Then it is post-processed into a 3D model. There, there are some elements of the post-processing that simplify the 3D model. And because uh, putting all the details, 100% of the details that was captured with the photos would not be feasible to transfer them to a mobile device or, or to client's browser because it would be simply too, too heavy in terms of megabytes. Imagine yourself uh, just playing with a virtual Tryon and consuming your, uh, your mobile uh, internet uh, like one gigabyte per hour or something like that just by playing with virtual trying that's infeasible right so we need to make this in this model much much lighter uh, so we reduce the number of, of uh, 
vertices that are in the in the image so basically we simplify it we smooth it a bit uh, it still looks nice there are methods to, to make sure it will look nice but for example from 100 megabytes we can go down to like six megabytes or something like that and this is much more feasible already mm, and and then and uh, some some elements and uh, that you can simply resolve on the device for example with the with the elements that that influence how the how the model is looking like uh, so so to uh, so to adjust the lighting and so on so so this is this is doable with the phone you can just take a set of photos upload it to a specific server that simply does once the post processing of of the model and then you have a ready to use model on on your virtual trial solution all, all, you do not the... need to send all the you do not need to send all the products to a dedicated company with a 3D scanners and so on and so on. So, so to all the retailers listening to us, guys, can you hear what Jagger just said? So you do not have to worry anymore about packing, let's say, 100 pairs of your glasses, sending them to your vendor, to your solution provider, and ask them for a 3D models, which they usually charge them charge you for you actually take your phone take 100 photos in a very easy setup and that might enable you to create a 3d model thanks to an app only based on this 100 photos in my opinion that's like one step one uh, another milestone when it comes to 3d modeling as a whole but also virtual try on solutions because they um become accessible more than ever before and if i may interrupt a second i would be please. careful specifically with glasses glasses are quite similar to jeweler in that area because they are very shiny right there is a lot of light reflections so and the, the photo uh, with with your mobile may have some issues at the beginning at least and this is this is something that would require a bit more uh, research whether whether it would work this way specifically but for shoes for clothes and so on and so on that that is perfectly feasible solution yeah but but one way uh, of addressing that could be that you actually pop out the glasses the, the glass itself the lens from from the model and <laughs> uh, create a model based on that and then maybe if there is a need, if we decide with our customers that I actually would like to see some kind of a lens inside, maybe virtually applying it uh, on the model, that might be a solution itself just to present. Because yes, we definitely. Always know, mm -hmm. we, we always know we not wear the, the, the frames themselves without the lens. We actually always have the lens on as well. Therefore, it changes what it looks like, but definitely an issue um an issue that can be addressed touching uh, on accessibility previously we can maybe now move on to another question from our audience so philip uh, tried to play a trick with us and ask us a tricky question that is um, virtual try on versus accessibility is that topic even being addressed now or are we technologically at the secu securing the fundamental fundamentals phase where will you be willing to answer that i see agata is smiling already agata I what can, do you think? i can start but then i think i'll i'll pass on the technology the, the technology parts to to Grzegorz. um so ux wise i think that we are not there yet um it has an amazing potential um but it's a it's a two-folded question. So on, on one hand, you can think of virtual trials as a solution that can be um, a potential game changer for companies that want to address their users um, that need accessibility features or users that are unable to go to the store and can actually try on uh, virtually things in the privacy of their own home. Um, <clears throat> Um, before my NetGuru days, I used to work in a, in a medical company where we would use such solution for, for hearing instruments, uh, hearing devices. And, and that was amazing for users who were not able to travel, um, for example, in the United States, States where the distances were, um, were, were big uh, quite often. Um, 
So there is a huge opportunity there to serve uh, an underserved user group, user group uh, actually. And it's a wonderful potential that I think companies could really explore. And I would encourage them to. But then when it comes to accessibility of the virtual trial solutions itself, I think this is uh, a little bit of an uncharted territory. And while um, basic accessibility rules, the same that we would apply for websites, um, could apply there, uh, I don't. I, I haven't seen this being researched. Um, I haven't seen this being tested. Uh, we must be honest. We also have not tested the accessibility of those solutions. But from what we have seen. Um, there might be issues in the way it is used, in the way it works on the phone. Um, and of course, it will be difficult um, to serve all groups of users um, when it comes to accessibility. So that's a topic that we definitely need to explore more. Um, but it's an interesting one. And I think as NetGuru, we are really interested in uh, in accessibility right now and putting a lot of focus on, on this. So we will definitely be looking into that um, as well when designing solutions like this. Yeah, Rachel, I, do you think we are technologically there to, to address that? Well, I don't think uh, the, in the ML part itself, uh, there is much we could do and, uh, in the area of accessibility, especially in this specific setup. It much more depends on the setup in which the machine learning is used, not the machine learning itself. So I would say the the part where we could address it from the accessibility perspective is actually uh, still on the level of, of designing the user experience on designing the customer journey and how, how someone interacts with the virtual trial and uh, because that's and that's where the accessibility issues may appear. Yeah. Uh, it's not whether the model actually puts your glasses on glasses or, or something like that. Uh, which is what, what we could directly address with, with the machine learning part. Uh, it is rather how to design this the specific uh, flow uh, of, of the user through the virtual trial so that so that it is accessible to them. Uh, in terms in terms of that, uh, I, I would need to simply uh, agree to you, Agatha, and to all that you mentioned already. Mm, we are doing this kind of investigations, uh, maybe maybe not 100% from accessibility perspective, but in general, how machine learning is embedded in, in the customer experience, in customer journey, uh, so that we understand all the details, beca because it can uh, completely change the machine learning models that are used out there. Uh, for example, the, this poses different limitations from the performance perspective. It poses different limitations from the perspective of what we can show, how we can show it, and so on and so on. Uh, so it is super important while designing this kind of virtual trial solution and any other machine learning solution. But it is not 100% uh, uh, embedded into the model, I would say. And the, the machine learning guy uh, does not think about it while he implements a specific model. It is one step earlier when we are figuring out which models actually should be applied. I think one one very important thing to uh, to mention here is that um, when we think about um, virtual trials and accessibility, we need to think about you know the visual impact the certain disabilities or challenges uh, that users are facing have, and uh, so a solution like this should be able to correctly. Um, fit things, rings, glasses, earrings, uh, on people with very, very varying features, uh, physical features, um, you know, so that it doesn't create uh, really challenging situations or unpleasant situations for users um, who could really benefit from using that from their privacy, uh, from the privacy of their home, uh, because maybe, you know, it's challenging for them to, to go to a store, uh, but that we wouldn't want to frustrate them, upset them, uh, mm -hmm. be... Mm -hmm. Well, no. there is always an issue, for example, in terms of diversity in the training set for the machine learning model. So, for example, when we, when we want to recognize where the item should be placed in the image, and we need to take care of different aspects of, for example, impairments and so on that may appear 
and which would impact where that item would appear on the photo. So, so this is something that we signal to our customers always and that we need to take care of that uh, or at least be fair and state that, well, this is the area where the application may not work as, expect, as expected. At least we need to be fair there. Uh, so, so this is that we signal. Uh, sometimes it is feasible to provide such a data set, but on the other hand, uh, you need to remember that we need to collect this kind of data first. So it is not always pleasant also for those people to provide this kind of data just for the sake of some abstract machine learning model training and so on and so on. So this is something that we need to keep in mind. Uh, of course, uh, we, we need to uh, keep in mind that there are such cases and that it may impact, but it is on the level of, of designing the machine learning uh, machine learning system. Um, sometimes it impacts the, the selection of a specific machine learning model, sure, uh, but, but uh, we need to think of that one step ahead and not, not after we did something. G guys, for a second, I thought I'm not even needed here anymore. I thought you would get the conversation going on and on. I'm I'm glad, as usual, that the virtual try-on topic is still um, interesting for us. Still, as mentioned in the beginning, has a lot to uncover. But um, mo moving things a little bit forward and a um, question, I believe, would nicely wrap it up everything that, that we said today. So in three to five sentences from all of you guys, what do you think? How far are we from the, from the mass adoption of virtual trials? Because it was introduced 10 years ago, let's say more or less. Um, during this time, some of the brands have touched them. It's not that we go to every fashion jewelry uh, spectacle site and we see a virtual trial. It's still something that ha happens rather um it, it's not that obvious for most of the retailers so the question is three to five sentences mass adoption whether or not and when Lukas, would you like to start yeah um, from my perspective it's happening right now when uh, <clears throat> uh, when i think about uh, especially about uh, stores with spectacles the, the, uh, I think that it is a common solution right now, and uh, it, it becomes a standard uh, in the online stores, uh, bigger online stores. So it uh, um, it's. I think we we are really close that uh, that. Uh, mm, that it's gonna be a mass adoption in a retailers, but it depends on the category because uh, there are more categories that are more difficult to implement and less difficult to implement, and uh, it it uh, it depends on the also on the uh, providing the the tested solutions on the market. Thank you, thank you, Agata. What would you add also from I would say, consumer's perspective, how do you see it going? I think uh, it gathers traction and there is huge potential um, for it right now. And, you know, like you said, there was a moment 10 years ago when there was hype for that and somehow it didn't catch on. But maybe it was a moment of timing and we are in a different moment in time right now in a different social situation right now. Uh, with uh, you know, with with the world around us that has changed in the past uh, three years in a way that we didn't expect at all, and it's shifted the way we work, we live, we socialize, we shop, um, and that creates challenges but also opportunities. And virtual try-on is an answer um, to some of those, I think. So it's, I think it, it has a chance of happening, and and uh, it's worth looking into definitely. So from the UX perspective, we are ready. From the technological perspective, we are ready. Grzegorz, when? 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 Is it, is it already happening? Do you already see a trend yourself? 
<laughs> That's, that, that actually depends. So there are already some plug and play virtual try solutions for like Shopify or, or other shops that are quite popular. Uh, in some cases, the, these solutions may be cost effective solution uh, if you just want to keep up. But uh, the question is whether you just want to keep up or you want something more. So if you aim to really drive your user experience, you will need to answer a few tough questions about the trade-offs that you will have to balance in cor correctly. For example, is it okay to make the realism sky high but exclude users of all their devices? Or should we double the work for the specific logic behind? Because, because this will all depend uh, how, how massive will be the adoption of a virtual try and whether that serves a specific purpose that you have in mind or not. And due to some challenges, I believe that a really well-fitting solution can be achieved rather with an external technological partner because a computer vision expert wouldn't be that easy to recruit and hire nowadays. So in this area, there may be some challenges. And if you want to drive the experience just beyond selling the product, I see no other option actually than investing in a custom virtual train solution. Maybe not building it in-house, uh, but but uh, with a technological partner and so on. It may be on basis of an existing solution. It doesn't have to be built from scratch. Uh, but if you want to be perceived as a leader, you know what are your specific processes. You do not want to have something that is very generic and, for example, makes your shoes look like plastic, right? Uh, no one wants to buy plastic shoes that do not scale to into your uh, foot size or so. Or after scaling, are uh, your your Adidas boots are up to your knees or something like that, right? So uh, it, that depends how how realistic the experience is supposed to be. Because for for generic cases, there are already solutions for massive adoption. Uh, when it comes to really dedicated solutions that will drive users' experience, I believe there is a huge gap, and it will depend on the capacity of of the devices in terms of compute power and uh, how much the companies will invest basically in building those solutions that will address their specific products, their specific areas that that they want to be leaders in. Is is that is that a wrap up or or what? I believe you have covered you Lukas, you Agatha, you Gregor, you have covered topic from all the perspective that we can imagine. I would like to remind our um, audience that the report can still be downloaded and there is even more inside than we have just said. We have worked on this report for 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 quite some time, so I strongly encourage you to to take advantage of that as it is free. Uh, to you guys, to you, Agata, Lukas, Grzegorz, thank you for the report that came to life. Thanks to, to our work. Thank you for this today's call. Uh, I'm even stronger, encouraged and positive that it is very important to co combine all these talents uh, at the same time. So the UX talent, the technological talent, the business perspective, no matter what technological solution you implement, all these should be should be taken into consideration. And uh, I'm I'm really glad to have you always alongside me when when discussing these topics. And once again to our audience, um, guys, we have these lives going on quite freq frequently. Different kind of disruption talks, different kind of LinkedIn lives. Follow us on, on different medias. You will have um, the free access to, to, to different, different conversations covering different topics, sometimes more focused on business, sometimes more focused on the technological side. But we, all of them are, are very interesting. So feel encouraged to do so. Thank you guys once again. Fantastic talking to you. I, I hope you to, to see you in the nearest future. Thank you to our audience for for great uh, amount of questions and engaging in the uh, in the discussion. Have a great day and see you all soon. Thank you. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.